Hello and welcome to National Focus. I am Adicia Burton. In the headlines, operations commence at New Marigot Hospital, Parliament meets on Tuesday, and Minister for Education visits Grand Bay Primary School. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. Friday, October 27th, Popcorn, Mikkel Henderson, DJ Stacks, Five, Patrice Roberts and the Eighteen. TK International, Night 2, Saturday, October 28th, Barry's Hammond, Tabu Combo, Gordon Henderson, Silk All Stars, Joella Sewell, NG, Jalu Guanel, Benny Christos, Joe Boy, Ezra, The Fun Machine, and Jiggy, Esa Bantan. Night 3, Sunday, October 29th, The Grand Finale, Ecstasy Band, Marshall Montano, Midnight Groovers, Jada Kingdom, Signal Band, for more information and ticket purchases, visit the official website at dominicafestival.com. Don't miss out on the World Creole Music Festival 2023, a celebration of legacy. Welcome back. Public operations of the new Marigot Hospital have commenced. The hospital began providing service to the public on Monday. This is in keeping with government's promise to have the hospital operational by September. The Accident and Emergency Department has begun 24-hour daily operation, while specialist clinics such as pediatrics are also available. Services at the hospital are being rolled out on a phased basis. The official commissioning of the new Marigot Hospital is expected in October. The Government Information Service will bring you more details on the commencement of operations at the new Marigot Hospital in our next National Focus. The fourth meeting of the first session of the 11th Parliament gets underway on Tuesday, September 12th from 10 a.m. This is expected to be a historic meeting where government will present its nominee for the Office of President of Dominica. The term of His Excellency Charles Angelo Savre comes to an end on October 1, 2023. President Savre is ineligible for re-election as he has completed two terms in office. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt has announced that government's nominee for the position of president is Mrs. Sylvani Burton. I am pleased to announce that in my capacity as Prime Minister, I have consulted with the leader of the opposition, Honorable Jasper Paul, on my nominee for the office of president of the Commonwealth of Dominica. I wish to inform the country that I have nominated Mrs. Sylvani Burton as a candidate of the election of President of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Ms. Burton, 58 years old of age, is from Salibia, Carnegie Territory, and has served as Permanent Secretary in various ministries since 2014. She was Permanent Secretary in the Ministries of Community Development, Foreign Affairs, Youth Development and Social Services, and Trade, and is currently the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of the Environment, Rural Modernization, Kalanago Upliftment, and Constituency Empowerment. Mrs. Burton is a former Development Officer in the Ministry of Kalanago Affairs and was District Development Officer for many years. She has been a Justice of the Peace for 25 years and has served as lay associate in the Roman Catholic Church for over 20 years. She holds a master's degree in project management and a bachelor's degree in rural development. Mrs. Sylvani Burton is married with two children and resides in the Carnegie Territory. Leader of the Opposition, Honorable Jesma Paul Victor, has not publicly indicated whether or not she will support government's nominee. The Constitution of Dominica dictates the procedures to follow in the event there is no joint nominee for presidency. According to Section 19 of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Dominica, the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition are required to, within 90 days before the term of office of President expires, consult with a view to agreeing upon a joint qualified nominee as a suitable candidate for election as President. In the event a nominee is agreed upon, the process is straightforward and the Prime Minister is required to notify the Speaker in writing of a joint 
nomination. The Speaker must then summon a sitting of the House at which he must notify the House of the nomination and declare the nominee duly elected without requiring a vote. However, if we are unable to agree on a joint nominee, that is to say the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition, other members of the House of Assembly are permitted to submit nominees for election to the Office of President and an election compromising, comprising sorry, those nominees will take place. Parliament is also expected to offer condolences to the late Speaker Emerita Honorable Alex Boyd Knights and former Parliamentary Representative for the Salibir constituency, Mr. Fraswa Bari, who both passed away recently. The Government Information Service will bring live coverage of parliamentary proceedings. With the commencement of the 2023-2024 academic school year, Minister for Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence, Honorable Octavia Alfred, paid a visit to the Grand Bay Primary School on Monday. Students of the Grand Bay Primary School returned to their school last week for the first time since the passage of Hurricane Maria. Minister Alfred says special arrangements are in place to accommodate the 181 students of the Grand Bay Primary School while final restoration works continue. From Wednesday, maybe up to the end of September, I, I'm taking a little spin around now, especially to the schools that, where we have a new arrangement or a different arrangement. So this morning I came to see how Grand Bay Primary is doing, settling in, because they were at Grand Bay Secondary in the afternoon shift, and we try to accommodate them. The work at Grand Bay Primary, as you can see, it, it's, it looks good, but the work is still not complete. We have finishing touches to do, but we um, arrange space for the students so that they can be at their school during a morning shift. Up to two they will go, and in the afternoon the, the work will continue. The Grand Bay Primary School is expected to be completed by the end of 2023. However, the learning environment has been well equipped to facilitate the students. We are hoping that the work at Grand Bay Primary will complete by the end of the year, and so we can have the, the kind of a, not a commissioning because not a new building, but we will have a ceremony because we are going to rename this school after um, Edward Regis, Honorable Edward Regis from Grand Bay, who served in his community at all levels and also in Parliament. So we are hoping that the work will complete, but the children, they are, they are in a safe place, they have washrooms, they have hand washing stations, and as you, you can go, we can go visit them as soon as they settle down. Um, we have made it quite conducive for them to continue their learning in their environment. Principal of the Grand Bay Primary School, Mr. Evans James, expressed his gratitude for the efforts made by the minister. I, I was shocked when I saw the minister today because I know um, she's a very busy person, but she has been in contact with me and she never told me she was coming to Grand Bay. So seeing her this morning was a little shock and the children were very happy to have her. Um, she being at the school this morning means a lot to me and it tells me the passion that she has for education and for the children in the country. It is one thing to tell you how things are, but to come and see it yourself, it's a different thing. And I was very happy that she saw what is happening at the school. And uh, I will continue working with her if I have any problems. I will go through the, through the protocol, but um, we talk well. And I'm happy that she was able to address the children, the teachers and the parents at the assembly this morning. Minister Alfred plans to visit schools with new arrangements such as Bellevue Chopin Primary School, Baroness Patricia Scotland Primary School, and the Northeast Comprehensive Schools, among others, throughout the month. Sixteen families from the Paybush constituency could receive new homes as a Christmas gift this year. Major progress has been recorded on the housing development at Assi Platt in Paybush. Alia Martin reports. Sixteen families from the Paybush constituency could receive new homes as a Christmas gift this year. Major progress has been recorded on the housing development in Asi Plat Pebush. Minister for Housing and Urban Development, Honorable Melissa Popon Skerritt, along with the Parliamentary Representative for Pebush Constituency, Honorable Lakia Joseph,
conducted a side visit of the project on Thursday to get a first-hand view of its advancement. I am very pleased with the progress thus far. Um, from my observation, it appears that I'm positive that this will be ready before the end of the year. Uh, many of them have made quite a bit of uh, progress in finishing. Some of them maybe could be ready as close as this month. And in this area, it, it, I would say it's like its own little village of garden-style apartments, I would call it, actually. Uh, there are about 16 units. Uh, the contractors are all local contractors. We have about six to seven contractors. And I met with a few of them today. Uh, many of them have, of course, people within the area working on these buildings, so about 10 to 20 people who are employed locally. These houses are being constructed to withstand hurricane force winds and seismic activity. Minister Skerritt says these houses are also being built with the possibility of expansion in the future. These homes are full concrete and it allows the person to actually build a second floor in the future if they want. And I've seen some of them that they could actually build below. So this, I know that whoever the recipients are, they're going to be very happy, very excited about it. I taught a few of them. Uh, the finishing touches are intact. They are clean spaces, modern type, um, open space concept with your kitchenette and your living room area. Um, many of them, or all of them, have little porches. You must have a porch when you're living in a tropical island. And uh, modern lighting, uh, some of them fans I see have been installed already. And so things are looking up for us here. Each standalone unit is costing over $300,000. Following the completion of these houses, focus will be placed on the Asiplat Road to complement the housing development area and provide better access. Meanwhile, Parliamentary Representative for the Paybush Constituency, Honorable Akia Joseph, is excited for the realization of this project. She also gave flowers to former Member of Parliament, Ms. Rosalind Paul, for the inception of this housing development. Um, it started during the time that she was a parliamentary representative for the Pebush constituency and she really had an integral role to play in the development of this housing project. And I am elated that 16 families, um, both from Pebush and Tibo actually, will benefit from this housing, um, housing project. It has transformed the lives of the persons, of the people in the, in the community and the constituency by extension. We have um, at one point about 60 persons employed at, at one point on, on this project and even 20 persons, up to 20 persons on one of the, of the duplexes and I'm really, really grateful for that. So um, before the end of the year, I must say the lives of 16 families will be transformed. Supervising engineer for the MMCE North Projects, Dr. Bertilia Bartley-Peter, says the employees on this project have been working at a steady pace. Another thing I need to really um, elaborate on is the 15% yeah. that was instructed by the Prime Minister to help with the progress on the cost of materials. It has given an extreme boost to the contractors and they as well consider that we've had some contractors who were dormant and since then they've come on board, they're fully active. Right now we have another issue, we don't have demand for the projects on site. So we have guys working and we need the retail companies, we need the hardware companies to get together and get our material ready so that we can finish in time. Thank you, Alia, for that report. More housing developments are in the pipeline for the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development. A recent site visit to Tibo confirmed that plans are being settled to erect an apartment complex to improve the quality of living for people in Thibo. Though in the preliminary stages, Minister for Housing and Urban Development, Honorable Melissa Popon Skerritt, says this project is expected to change the lives of the people in that area. She says the apartment units will be of similar designs to the City Breeze apartments in Roseau. It will be a combination of commercial spaces and residential spaces. So we just took a walk up to the location where we are going to explore the options of erecting a beautiful structure for the residents of Thibault. 
Um, my team from housing is here with me and of course we're in the preliminary stages so we are going to go through the survey plans and so on and so forth. We have to acquire the lands um, but this is what is in the cards for Thibault as housing is concerned. Meanwhile, Parliamentary Representative for Thibault, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, has already begun discussions with landowners for the acquisition process. Thibault is a very small community with very little land available for expansion or for construction. Um, so luckily I've been able to speak to um, some landowners in the community and we've, we've put in, we've put in a, a number of different lots together. Um, in a, in a, in a con con contiguous manner uh, to allow us to get some space to, to do some housing for the residents in Tibo. So I know the Minister for Housing and her team um, went there to do the uh, inspection uh, so that the London Survey Department can follow up with the necessary processes involved in acquisition of, of private lands. Uh, once that is done, they will move to do some designs um, and present it to the residents of Tibo um, so that we can, we can look at it. Prime Minister Skerritt says the thought process behind the acquisition and piecing of small lots is to ensure that the community stays close-knit and within their own space. But what I'm trying to avoid is to build homes for the people who need homes from Tibo outside of Tibo. Because once you do that, then you run the risk of, of, um, of causing the original Tibo to die in a sense, because the people who, who you're going to move are younger people. The people who you're going to move are children. And if you move younger people and children from a community, then you know you have a problem there in terms of activity. And so I'm trying to see how far we can keep as many people in Tibo by, by, by creating solutions within the space. So I had a very good meeting with the village council um, last week, and they also have bought into that concept. and. Um, uh, following that meeting, I, I sent the Minister for Housing and her, her team to look at it and then advise me. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Welcome back. Plans have already begun for Christmas celebrations this year. Parliamentary representative for the Roseau Central constituency, Honorable Melissa Popon Skerritt, is determined to bring back the Christmas spirit and cheer to Dominica. Honorable Popon Skerritt is looking to introduce to Thibault the popular Santa's Mall at the request of her husband, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt. Last Thursday, the Roseau Central MP and her team met with Thibault Village Council to discuss their proposals and begin preparations. The meeting bore fruit as members of the Thibault Village Council were satisfied with the guidance provided by Honorable Popon Skerritt. Uh, the Prime Minister instructed that this time he wanted his own Christmas district in the north in his constituency, similar to what we have done in Roseau for the past uh, few years. And so I'm here with his team and the Thibault, Thibault Village Council, who I met earlier, who expressed their their views and their plans and suggestions and recommendations in terms of what they would like to see here on the Tibo playing field. But I can tell you it is going to be magnificent. We are going to give it the same touch as we do in Roseau. It's going to be a children's area. Um, it's an opportunity for all the local vendors within this village as well as the surrounding villages to showcase their items. I told them to get ready, start preparing from now, especially those who have to maybe import some of the raw, raw materials. Honorable Popon Skerritt says the Christmas district in Thibault will feature all things local, including talent. She says this initiative is all part of restoring the Christmas spirit in Dominica. There's a lot of children with talents that we may not know about who's really looking for an avenue to be able to showcase their skills. And so they are working on this. They seem to be very excited. And um, it's another way for the community to come together. Everybody can come together to make this happen. Um, the college students as well can gain credits from volunteerism in terms of um, their help in setting up and manning the booths. So this is going to be just as magnificent, as I said, like Rosa Central. It's an, another Christmas stop where even someone in Roseau can take a drive up or from anywhere in Dominica and have another um, experience 
of the Christmas cheer that we continue to spread across Dominica. Preparations are also ongoing for the anticipated Santa's Mall in the city of Roseau. The initiative, which has been well received over the years, will see an even greater expansion this year. In Rosa Central, I am also preparing for my Santa's Mall. Um, I'm appealing to all vendors. There's a vendor's call out. Get ready, get prepared, send your applications in because I will be coming to you very soon for us to start this process. Of course, it is going to be bigger and better. One thing I can tell you that it will not be on the Bayfront this time. But um, seeing that I am expanding every year, I think I have, I, I can't do what I have to do. I'm too restricted in terms of space on the Bayfront and I want it to be a little bit more accessible to the patrons who will be coming. So look out this year, it is going to be on another level both in Roseau and the Thibault Vickers constituency. Christmas is a time for joy and togetherness. These creativities are being implemented to do just that across the island. The Sanctuary Rainforest Eco Resort and Spa in Loda is expected to transform Dominica's tourism offering when completed. The Eco Resort, which is being constructed by Vital Developers Limited and spans across 10 acres in Providence Estate in Loda, is the newest in a string of hotels and resorts being built with funds from the Citizenship by Investment program. When completed, the Eco Resort and Spa will boast of 72 eco friendly villas and upscale amenities including private jacuzzis, two infinity pools, restaurants, bars, spas and boutiques among others. Project manager Dr. John Colin McIntyre says this project will transform Dominica's tourism industry when completed. This project is a project that really can take Dominica to another level. Of course we are just on the verge of the Midland Falls territory, which is the Midland Falls, which is about 45 minutes from here, and I think this lends well to it. And visitors who come to Dominica they, 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 during the tourist season, during the off tourism, tourist season, they can really have a good experience here in terms of what we have to offer here. The number of um, parrots flying in the night, sorry, not in the night, sorry, and the number of parrots flying back to their home in the evening, so that's an added, added um, feature as well of, of, of the area. And of course, I see this project as a major win-win for everyone in terms of employment during the construction phase, employment during the operating phase. And of course, if you were to come here during the cruise season, for example, you'd notice a lot of um, buses coming here because it's a 45-minute hike. They come here, they go across to the um, Midland Falls, something that they can accomplish and then head back to the Rishit. This resort is expected to improve the economic landscape of the area. The project is going to cater for the production farmers in the region in terms of those who can produce the vegetable crops for that, livestock farmers who want to look at organic type farming, who want to look at you know, how they raise the animals because this project has to pride itself on, on, itself on the service industry and it's critical that we look at nestled together, Dominica is largely ecotourism as we know and this is the first real one of its type in Dominica whereby you have an eco-tourism pro um, project in the rainforest and we want to have a high level of service here in terms of the service industry and that's what's going to market this area. I want when people come here and look at the yoga that's being offered here, meditation, the spas, the restaurants, the pool, just name it that is, it's a great experience. It's not too far from Roseau as we know, it's close to Roseau, in a few minutes you're up here. So, I think it's a great, pro it's a, a great, great project. He says its location and offerings will boost the employment opportunities for tourism stakeholders in all fields. I'm seeing that all our young ladies who did the hair breeding, who want to do little sort of things that you know that they can, you know, gain some positive employment for themselves and make some money. I see them fitting into this project quite well. So I think all in all, in a nutshell, I think it's a great project for Dominica and I look forward to seeing it moving on to the future. Fishermen of the Paybush constituency have been assured that they will soon receive a new jetty in Anse de May. More in this report. Fishermen of the Paybush constituency have once again been assured that they will soon receive a new jetty in Anse de May. On one of his stops during a tour of the Paybush constituency on Thursday, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt met with the fishermen and other residents of the constituency to update them on plans for the new jetty. This infrastructure development has been long awaited in the constituency 
as its construction will ease the lives of the local fishermen, while also improving trade with the neighboring French islands. The Anzi May port is also a port of entry for the north. The, the jetty has been of some concern to the fishermen and indeed the wider community, you know, um, for, for some time now. Uh, during, just before COVID, we had done some, some uh, investigations and we were advised on the, the preliminary designs and costings for this project. But of course, um, everything during COVID time, um, you know, was set aside um, as our preoccupation was on, um, was on saving lives and livelihoods. And so we have been able to identify um, some funding because the project is a, is a wide, wider project, including jetty, administrative buildings for the customs and, and immigration um, reception area, etc., and improving the fishermen's lockers and all these things and, and creating a better ambience here. The jetty will be the first phase of this major project. In a bid to involve the residents and all stakeholders in the process, a meeting is scheduled for next Wednesday to finalize the location for the jetty. So the first phase we'll be doing is for the jetty because that is, that is priority number one for them. And so we'll do this and after we'll look at the other, the other facilities um, that are part of the, of the, of the, of the overall master plan um, for the Anzimate port. But I think the fishermen understand that and they've accepted the approach. We'll have a first meeting Wednesday next week um, with all stakeholders, village council, the PAL rep, the Ministry of Tourism, DASPA, um, the Ministry of Public Works and, and the fishermen to discuss the location of the, of the jetty because there was, when we came here to do the, the investigation, there were different views based on their own observations as, as fishermen. So it's important to have the local content as part of the um, submission so that they can they can certainly advise on the movement of the sea and the current and all these things that are so important, I believe, in determining the engineering that will be utilized there. Member of Parliament for the area, Honorable Lakia Joseph, thanked her constituents for their patience and encouraged them to remain engaged with the project. Your patience has proven fruitful and I just want to assure you that I will work as, as hard as I can to ensure that all of the stakeholders and the partners work together so that we can see the completion of the Anzime port. We, we know of the benefits, we know how it serves the community, we know how important it is to us, so we all have to work together as a community whenever a meeting is called or something is happening. Let us all get involved, let us all get our hands dirty, let us all give our, our input, our opinions, let us all say how we feel and let us all have a say so at the end of the day we cannot say this one or that one will say us because it's for us, by us, and it will be done collectively. So once again, thank you, and I give you my commitment that I will work toward the completion of the Anzime Jetty together with the Prime Minister, the Government of Dominica, and all stakeholders and partners. Minister for Tourism, Honorable Denise Charles, says when completed, the port will improve access into the country and boost tourist arrivals for the area. Access is a top priority for the government to make it easier for people to come to our country for tourism, for trade, not just by air, but by sea. And I know for a fact that this port is a very active port in, in Anzimi. And, and so, as you heard the Prime Minister commitment, we are committed to delivering on this port. So once we can meet next week, we can finalize on the area and we can go to the design phase then you have the commitment from this government that your port will be delivered to you to enhance your livelihoods and their services and to increase visit arrivals to Anzimi. One local fisherman, Mr. Julius Carrier, is thankful to see progress on this project. It's a very long time now. We have been waiting for some work in reference to the um, jetty and we're happy that we're seeing some, some form of action is taking place in reference to that. Once again, thank you. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis.dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I am Adicia Burton. Thank you for watching.